Welcome everybody to day four of the Advanced Healing Course. And the next three days we're going to be focusing on the utilisation of the seven primordial rays of healing. And uh, although this may on the surface seem conceptual, it is actually very, very practical. We're talking about the pure energetic nature of the universe in its essential form. And this essential form then manifests through different layers or harmonics, different energetic vectors through the space time and other continuums to um, facilitate change and to facilitate the building blocks of the reality we, which we experience. So these seven main rays emerge as a kaleidoscopic manifestation from the white light that emerges from the colourless ray of the infinite, the Paranatman light. So there is a continuous and ever-flowing symbiosis from source or unpotential or potential unmanifest into the manifest world of Maya. Okay, And again, I'm going to say to you, Eva, and I'm going to say to you, Lucinda, who is here today, that even though, you know, in some ways it's always a little bit intellectual, believe me, it's very, very practical. However, it's important to understand some very simple but basic concepts so that we may be able to extrapolate effectively as receptors and transmitters the subtle effluent of the universe to facilitate outcomes that will heal the planet, heal ourselves, our loved ones, animals, people, etc. Okay? Now, today we're going to focus just on one ray. Okay? Today we're going to focus on one ray. And that ray is the first ray, the red primordial ray of divine will. Its colour is red. Now, it's interesting because we have three Aries in the room today. So the red is very linked with Aries because we're ruled by Mars. And it is the pure will. Now, actually, above the abyss or above the separation between the illusory subjective worlds of Maya and the non manifest potential of the quantum field, the infinite. Um, there is a symbiosis between the two. Above the abyss, um, will and love become the same thing. They're actually the same. Divine will and divine love. Divine will in Greek is known as Thelema. Divine love is known as Agape. Unconditional pure love, that is love without any need, for, there's no agenda, there's no attachments, we love unconditionally, okay? Irrespective of whether the recipient loves us back or not. And that pure nature of divine love, of pure attraction, um, acts, if you say, if you like, it's the, it's the perfect mirror of divine will. So the will is the pure nature of intention. The pure nature of drive and intention. Okay, and love should be the, the vehicle for its manifestation. So we activate our true will or true dharma and we use love, unconditional love, as the vehicle to bring forth our will as co-creators. Okay. So hence that's why the above the abyss will and love become the same. There is no difference above the abyss. Everything becomes the unity. It's not a homogenized unity, but it is a unity where everything is forms part of, of, uh, of a continuum that has no separation. It's like an acorn is like above the abyss. It contains within it within the simple seed all the all, all the, the all the future forests. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. And yet it's not actually manifest. Well that's beautiful. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I'm talking in these terms because when we call in these principles, we can facilitate change over time. Okay, the backbone of my work is invocation. Calling in something, when we learn and open our light bodies in the right way, we can call in things that will change the fabric of the reality which we're experiencing. So when people say to me, oh, Simon, you're so powerful. <laughs> oh, Simon, you're such a good healer or great healer or other stuff that they try. It's not about me. 
I have to tell you, I'm going to be honest with you, it's got absolutely nothing to do with me. It's only the fact that I've developed a knack of calling in those energies. So it's just like I was saying to um, Sian yesterday, it's like having an iPhone. The iPhone or a smartphone, it's purely a metaphor, isn't the pretty pictures on the phone. The photos were taken by somebody and the photos aren't the phone. The applications aren't the phone. The phone is simply a gateway. Okay, it's a gateway for what's out there in the cloud or out there in different applications. So it is with the light body. When we do this work properly and you're properly activated as I work with you on the expanded nature of this work and we're sufficiently activated, we become a great, a more effective gateway. Now, some people like Lucinda here. It's a naturally brilliant gateway for certain things and it's extraordinary how, <laughs> how sensitive and empathic she actually is. I'm just sorry to use her as an example. Uh, and there's a reason for that. It's not that she's so much better than everybody else. It's just she's better at those things because she's been more opened and activated in that particular way. Okay, I wasn't one of those people like her. I had to work at it to get to that place. And the thing is, we all have the potential to be brilliant psychics, brilliant channels, brilliant gateway healers, you know, brilliant creatives, brilliant artists, whatever you want to say. We all have the potential. It's simply a case of activating that part of us so that we can bring through what is needed. Okay? Today, the focus is on divine will, on pure intention. The true nature, and if you think about it, what what differentiates one thing from another in action is the nature of the will or the drive, which could also be described as the ability or the choice of the decisions that we make, the will chooses one reality in front of another. It chooses, if you're very willful, people who are very willful, the good or not so good, um, are, 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 we you know, we call, we describe them as driven people. Mm. People that know where they're going, people that have this, this indomitable spirit, if you like. I'm not saying that's good or bad, because it can be an indomitable spirit for negative things. But we're talking about the principles of will. It's the drive, the decision-making apparatus, the um, the focus, if you like, of the intention and the action and the life force, actually. It comes down to life force as well. You know, somebody who's, who's got great will, we don't generally think of them as weak or of low life force, but we might think of somebody who doesn't have much personal will, is a bit weak and a bit whims and a bit sort of flimsy. You know, we don't describe someone like that as something having a high life force, do we, generally? Okay, it's the nature of divine will. Okay, Now, of course, the will that we have and we exhibit on this planet, because it is a free-willed universe and we are free-willed beings, can be the wrong, I say that in inverted commas, the wrong decisions. The world is full of people who are willful and are making very bad decisions for this planet. Do you agree with that, Lucinda? Yeah. Uh, very much. So. I thought you would. Um, so, will in itself, it's not about good or bad, it's just the nature of the drive. What we want to do is make it the higher aspect of the will. Now, as I was saying earlier, all the rays have higher aspects to their pure nature and lower aspects. So, will, for example, pure will aligned to divine qualities is a brilliant manifesting tool for change and transformation and getting things done. However, if that will, Lucinda, is that love is not the vehicle for its utilization, if it's not tempered and held in check by the higher self or the true nature of the cosmic universe, that will can become out of hand and manifest as tyranny, tyrannical behavior, control, manipulation, narcissism, etc. We've all met people like that, haven't we, Lucinda? Mm -hmm. Yes, we have. I don't really call it a I don't know if I call it a narcissist. I don't know if I use that word for my brother. 
There's different manifestations of will out of control, is what I'm trying to say. So, when we use this ray in our healing work, okay, we obviously want to call in the nature of its highest nature, okay? And to do that, we call in the master of the ray in question, okay? We work with the master of the ray in question. The master of divine will is the ascended master, El Moria. El Moria. Did El Moria come about out of, how did that master well, the name of El Moria? Well, El Moria, El Moria was mentioned very much by Madame Blavatsky because he manifested as a physical being, physical, natural, physical person on the planet when she went to India in the late 19th century. El Moria has been known to have incarnated as a deification of pure will in some of the following people. And I'm mentioning them only as archetypes. King Arthur. Okay. Sir Thomas More. Sir Winston Churchill. Pure will. The nature of El Moria. To fight against the Nazi Germany, you had to be very willful. Yeah. The true nature, El Moria. Uh, and there's been plenty of others as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, the idea is what we want to do with, with when we're working with either ourselves or somebody. What we're always looking to do is is is, is go to the place of balance and alignment and centeredness <coughs> and parity. Yeah. To get the best results. Okay. With it and ourselves, if we work with El Moria, and we find that we're a little bit weak and a little bit weak will on some levels. El Moria will help straighten us out. It's not just about that. It might be the wrong use of will. Some of us might be very controlling. Will out of sorts, for example, often manifests as obsessive compulsive behaviour. Compulsion and obsession is will unchecked. Compulsion and obsession results from will being unchecked. So if someone's too willful, they don't have a an outlet for the will it can result in obsessive, compulsive or addictive behaviour. Okay. Okay, so then Okay. Can I ask a question? Sure. So you said uh, in the beginning, in mm -hmm. the beginning, you said about above the abyss is will and love and it is uh, it is one, it's like an acorn of potential, it is mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. What is will and love below the abyss? That is a good question. So what happens is when we go below the abyss or we start to manifest, we have the polarised aspects of love and will. So on the tree of life, it's Hesed, C-H-E-S-E-D, which is the love of Jupiter. Hang on, polarised of love and will. Okay. Yeah, and then you have Gabura, which is the will of Mars. Okay? So you have these two principles. Because we're living in the illusion of separation in the lower th dimensions. This is we're talking about three D. We're talking about not always. A, not it doesn't have to be that low vibration. It's just the idea. What we're doing is we can extrapolate okay. <clears throat> in the kaleidoscopic manifestations. We can extrapolate different aspects of form and okay. identify and understand it unto itself. But in the mystical mind, that form forms part of a continuum. Okay, it's part of it. There's, there's no separation. But for the purposes of um, exploration and the purposes of understanding um, and the purposes of comparison, it's useful to extrapolate things in their true essential nature, recognising, of course, that they form part of a continuum. So we can talk about the qualities of love, pure love, and we can talk about the qualities of pure will. In ancient Greek, thelema, will, and agape, love, 
add up to 93. So it's sometimes called the 93 current. Okay. 93 is the trinity of 31, which is Aleph Lamed, which is God. Okay, Al. Yeah, I, I, I don't know the answer to that question. I just asked, I but I think I think what happens is there's certain historical beings that become archetypal manifestations of yeah. a particular aspect of the nature because they hold that aspect with such completeness. Because I just wondered about those two. I mean, because I know that um, Sian's parents worked for the royal family. I mean, did they actually work for the Queen and Prince Philip? I just wondered. Because they're one of the most significant members, you know, they're the best family, the royal family, the most, one of the most significant families in the country. Well, I know a few people that have worked with the royals. They do? Yeah. No. Not just the young No. no. Um, but I don't want to go too off, off the thing. I think what we have to understand in, in, in the nature of this discussion is that there are certain deifications of the pure, pure aspects of Godhead. We could look at somebody, we could look at somebody, but you have actually brought me on to my next point in a roundabout sort of way, Lucinda. I only mentioned those two, right, because mm -hmm. I feel that, um, I saw, um, I don't know, because um, sometimes I get people in the spirit world, so I only think about Sian's parents, because I feel that they were shape-shifted into a monster, and I was sort of, I don't know how to ask him who he worked for, but he was then he sort of took a wire, and then he sort of said, I signed some official secrets act or something, Well, I don't know. That's that's a different subject altogether. I don't want to get too caught up in that. What I will say, though, I think in 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 further and uh, the expansion of what you're saying is, what we can say about people in general, okay, the personalities of people tend to be there tend to be four main ray influences in the personality. So I'll give you myself for example, I tend to be a one three five seven. So the main personality traits are will, creativity, science, and alchemy. Okay. Now if I was to look at you, Eva. I would say love. Creativity, science, and alchemy. So I would describe you as a two, three, five, seven. Lucinda, I go. I give her a one, will. A three, creativity. A five. And I think there's a very strong six within this cinder, which is devotion. Devotional and idealism forms a part, a strong influence on your personality. Now, having said that, that's just a quick summary, just off the top of my head, right, of you two. <laughs> having said that, we can access all these rays within ourselves. It's just that because of the astrological configurations and the nature of our karma, Mm -hmm. the, the karmic momentum we when we incarnate we will incarnate with it, the soul will choose to incarnate with some of the ray influences being more dominant than others as a result of a combination of factors including uh, astrological factors and the karmic uh, position that having been said we can activate the other aspects of ourselves Consciously, even though they may not, they may be hidden, or they may be what we call subdominant. Can okay. we not be born with seven? We can be, but generally speaking, the personality 
tends to have a primary and there's a reason for that I feel when we are born it's less than 12 light bodies are activated so generally speaking when you see somebody they tend to be oh she's very sporty oh he's very intellectual oh you know he's very artistic oh you know she's very creative oh you know so that kind of thing yeah so basically we we tend to fall into different categories but in response to your question you know just like when Lucinda said she asked about other members of the royal family you know you could probably look at different members like the queen and say you know they are primarily this or primarily that um that may be the case you know that may be the case but there is something called the renaissance man or renaissance woman mm -hmm. which has been something that's interested me for a long long time if you think of the renaissance times we think about somebody like leonardo da vinci who was an incredible an unbelievable yeah. uh, 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 painter just just beyond the sublime and he was an incredible and unbelievable thinker and scientist so there we have two very very different rays but but the, the, obviously leonardo da vinci was a man of such ability yes. that he was that he was able to activate on a very high level, two primary primordial rays. So we think about William Blake, who was also like you know a poet and a painter. Two very different disciplines. He was able to activate. Okay. Today we're talking about pure will, unassailable mm -hmm. purpose, the true nature of our decision making. And if I look at um, Lucinda, I think she's a very, very, very willful person. Now the thing yeah, about you are. Well, the Cinder thinks I'm a bit more willful than her. Well, I agree, but you, you have the will. And I can explain that. El Moria works directly with me. It's one of the two souls that I have, is El Moria. So the pure will is very noticeable in me. Now, the thing I want to say, what the Master said to me some years ago, okay? They said, Simon, the rays are not like an accelerator. Oh! You know, Lucinda should have a bit more will, or, you know, Simon should have a bit more love, or, you know, Eva should have a bit more creativity. It's, it's not as, that, that's a very simplistic and transparent way of looking at things. Yeah. What they said to me was, in every unfolding moment, there is an appropriate level that we, sh we can exhibit. So, like, someone like Lucinda might be naturally very willful, and yet in some ways, perhaps, I'm only suggesting this for purposes of this metaphor, she might be overly subservient. You know, or somebody can be very willful, but tyrannical and controlling and manipulative. Yes. That's not good either. So the glue of life, mm -hmm. and it's, it's the rays, is to do with the timing. It's the timing factor of when it is appropriate to, to adapt or use power through will. Or yeah. See, see it, 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 it's, it's the adaptation of our natures. And through the space time, the cons yeah, it's the environment, it's what's relevant and appropriate. Yeah. You know, if you're in a certain scenario, Lucinda, you know, it's appropriate to act and talk and behave in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And other scenario, it might be your parents or your bank manager, you want to use, yeah. you know, we, we're, not, we're not robots, we're not automatons. Yeah. Well, some of us do, some people in the world do seem like that. Because I've, I've come to this kind of theory of developing that, that time is one of the most extraordinary aspects of our life and I, I know that you know the 12 is very powerful on this planet or this mm -hmm. universe 12 months 12 hours of the day uh, 24 hours mm -hmm. of the two. Um, but when so it's right down to okay it can be the seasons but that's also related to time and and when we say something, if we're talking about the rays and applying our rays through ver verbal or through thought or through intention, does is wrapped around time, the timing. It is time, and timing is just the unfolding energies which we perceive through our cognitive apparatus, which gives us a sense of sequentiality extracted from the quantum field of infinite continuum that has no time or space. 
So from that hologram, we extract through our cognitive apparatus a set of belief systems which we make, we attempt to make sense of. Okay, so that which is we interpret, we, which we interpret, which we interpret through our own belief structures and systems and and and, and training. Structure, fantastic. Okay. This work today is about working with El Moria and Divine Will. And also to lift karmic imprints that may have impinged themselves upon us negatively. Okay, that are affecting the realities which we're experiencing. And to understand the nature of where will may come into it. It might be one of one life, for example. We may have been very, very controlling and subjecting and subjugating others to our natures in a way that was not appropriate, not good for them, um, abusing our power, for example. And as a result of that karmic imprint, we may decide to live out a different reality to somehow bring things back to parity in another life, that things may play out in a way that can ultimately dissolve any charge or trauma about issues we've created. Utilising the ray of divine will, utilising El Mori will help the most appropriate use of that primordial ray to come forth, as all the masters will with relevant rays. So somebody like you, Eva, for example, who I know has had a tr tricky time the last couple of months with certain things. The correct use of will would have shortcut the process. But it was a slightly incorrect use of what, in my opinion, that elongated a difficult situation. Interesting. Um, there's no judgment here. It's just, just my only personal consideration. But what I can see from your aura and where you are now is that you have shifted that and you are back to parity with your will now. And it shows in your, in your, in your eyes. It shows in your health. It shows in your general gait how you're holding yourself and what you look like. So Lucinda was able to spot that when she came in and so was I, okay? The correct use of will. And it's not like, oh, you know, we've got to have more, we've got to be more willful. No, it's not like that. There may be some situations where we need to be more willful and some situations where we need to use will in a different kind of way and be less dominant and less controlling and less, you know, I'm going to put my stamp on it kind of thing. It's about appropriateness. And when we use the master associated with each of the um, uh, uh, characteristics of, of, of each of the rays, they assist the process of recalibration of that primordial nature and they enable it to be utilised in the best way possible. Okay? So call in El Moria. Invoke El Moria. If we're in a battle of wills, it might be with your mother, Lucinda, or somebody else. If a battle of wills is going on, we're not quite sure what to do. Utilising the master of the relevant ray will help the best outcomes occur and the most appropriate use of that energy outside of ego, attachment and the rest of it. Because often will, if, we're, if we have a lot of will, and we don't have the, the environment to manifest that ray, it will tend to manifest as anger, for example. Frustration. Say that again. Anger and frustration will manifest if we're not using will properly. If we don't have an environment to express our true nature, we'll get frustrated and the will, the strength and the life force needs to f have a vehicle to unfold itself. If it doesn't have a proper vehicle, if we're controlled and manipulated, then our, our will may then become inappropriate, shall we say. Do you understand that? Yeah, I do. That so sick. I am going through <clears throat> some of the basic stuff, but actually the things that I'm sharing with you are actually fairly simple. Okay, the principles are simple and it's not about I'm telling you this is the way or that's the way. Please don't think that. I'm just sharing with you the principles to give you the tools to call in the relevant master or the relevant angelic being, which you all have the potential of doing calling in the, the assistance that you need on a certain level where will is a primal, 
a primal factor. Okay. What is the first ray that we talk about? It's quite simple in a way. It's the true, the pure drive for change, the pure nature that will facilitate the our unfolding Dharma. Okay? Finding one's true will, the true nature of who we are is very, very important so that we can live a life that is authentic. If we can invoke our true will or our true nature, then we will understand our purpose in life, what we're actually here for. And we can live that purpose out using love as its vehicle to facilitate the highest outcomes. It's that simple, guys. Okay? Any questions? Uh, okay, so what happens if someone is trying to stop you willfully? What happens if, if, if the circumstances uh, are holding you back to live a life authentic? Well, for example, sometimes somebody might be very controlling and manipulative. Yeah. Now, there might be a part of us who deeply abhors that behaviour of ourselves. Yeah. And as a result of that deep abhorrence, we're driven by our emotional responses to it, rather than the best and most, the maximum optimum effect of what we should be doing. Yeah, definitely. So a lot of people are driven by emotions. Oh, she's really bad to me. Oh, she's done this. Oh, he's done that. I'm going to get them back. I'm going to fight them to the death with my will. And you might end up in a battle situation, a warring situation, go on for years and really won't serve anybody, even though you're in the right. So the appropriate use of will might be not to give it any oxygen at all, that situation, to withdraw all one's personal power from it and let things play out. That might be the appropriate use of will. I don't know in any situation it's different. But if you call on the relevant master... The master will work with you and help you find what's best for you. Okay? Good. Any other questions on Will? Okay, I'm going to end this recording now. Okay. <laughs>